Okay, today we're going to talk about the Anchor Powerhouse 767, this thing right here. Why am I in the garage? Definitely not because my wife told me to get out of the house. I just, it's an artistic choice. Got to adjust a couple of things. Hang on a second. All right, where were we? The Anchor Powerhouse 767 is a 2048 watt hour, 2400 watt power station. Now it is designed and marketed for outdoor living, RV life, camping, that sort of thing, but also as a backup for your house in the event of a power outage. You can run up to 99% of appliances on this. I didn't test 99% of appliances, but it ran everything that I plugged it into. They also actually market it for off-grid living, powering workstations, like if they show a welder at 1,750 watts being run off of it. So you can use it in your garage and the shop. Kind of an all around that step up from a battery bank into an electric generator. Okay, so we'll talk about the build here a little bit. Everything's top quality. You know, you can just kind of feel that in the build on some things. And, you know, they advertise it as drop proof, anti-UV, shock proof, and flame resistant. I don't really know why you need it to be flame resistant. If it's caught on fire, something's horribly wrong, but it says it is. I, I didn't test all those, but I didn't treat it gently when I took it out. It's got wheels on it, which I'll come to later, but I've rolled it around and, you know, used it like a piece of equipment and not a fragile piece of porcelain. So well-built unit, very sturdy. It has the designs, the components in it allow it to be pretty light for something this size. It rates in at around 60, 62 pounds. So one person can pick it up and move it around. But it also comes with wheels that I mentioned earlier and this retractable handle, which comes in really handy for the kind of stuff I use it for, like camping and that sort of thing. So the batteries in this thing are lithium iron phosphate. That's a longer life cycle than your standard lithium batteries. Lithium iron phosphate typically run around 2000 cycles for the lifespan, whereas a normal lithium battery is around four to 500. But this is actually rated for 3000 cycles. What that means is you can charge it and discharge it 3000 times before it reaches 80% capacity. So if it's a 2000 watt ish power station, it would go to 80% of that, which is 1600 after 3000 charge and discharges. That doesn't mean you can't keep using it beyond that. It just means that it hits that 80% of the capacity rating. Pretty good life cycle on this thing. And that's reflected in the warranty. The warranty is five years and they say it has a 10 year lifespan. So very long life and good durability on the unit. Now, another feature on these that I've disliked on other power units is the display screen. I love this one. It's high quality. It's bright. You can actually set it to different brightness levels. And the information it gives is helpful. It gives the percent charge remaining. If you're running something on it, it will say how many watts it's pulling on output. It'll say how many hours it can continue running that particular device before it's going to reach zero. And when you're charging it, it gives the watts on input and says how long it's gonna to take to charge. So the last thing I wanna mention before I get into charging is it has an expansion unit you can buy separately that takes it from the 2048 watt capacity up to 4046, I believe it is. It is designed to be something as a backup for your home, as well as a portable power unit for camping and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to charging the unit, it's run by this, I don't know if it's called GAN Prime or GAN Prime. That's their trademark charging system. The GAN part stands for gallium nitrate. But really what you need to know is that it is a highly efficient charging system. It charges extremely fast and it also reduces the temperature while it charges, which if you've had one of these stations, one of the things about them is they get hot and then the fans kick on and they're really loud. Some of them have these plugs where they've got the big power brick. The power brick's got a fan in it. That fan's really loud as well. This GAN Prime charging system kind of alleviates all that. When you charge it, it sounds like this. Okay, so while I was doing the video, I was timing recharging it from zero. And once it really gets going, it's a little bit louder. It sounds like this. So just wanted to add that after the fact, but 
does make a little more noise when it really gets gone. Yeah, that's about the quietest unit on the market. I doubt that I can even pick any of that noise up with the camera and the microphone stuck right up against the unit. So really quiet, which is nice if you want it as a backup system for like your house or something, trying to sleep, this thing's running, you're not gonna hear it. As far as charging methods, you can charge with solar. It can accept up to 1000 watts of solar input for charging. Now that's supposed to be run off of five 200 watt solar panels. And it comes with this adapter. I'm gonna go get that, I'll be right back. All right, so it comes with this adapter and these are XT60 plugs. So the problem with this is it's designed for up to five solar panels to be connected to it. And these are all connected in parallel, which means you plug one solar panel in, you're charging, it's putting electricity into this. All of these exposed conductors on the other four plugs, they're live. So if you were to touch two of those, that circuit would go through your body and it could be a shocking hazard. Now, I've heard that Anchor is redesigning this. Another way that you can get around it though is on the back, it has the receiver for an XT60 and you can get an XT60 to MC4 adapter and then get adapters for the MC4 to hook the additional four or five panels, however much you need. So you do have to make sure that the solar panels you use are compatible. I had two different solar panels I wanted to test. Unfortunately, I didn't have an additional XT60 to MC4 adapter to hook up the second panel to check. It did work with a different brand of solar panel, but check for compatibility with the solar panels if you want to use it. They do sell their own solar panels, so they didn't give me any of those for review. Uh, I'm sure they're high quality, but they're also slightly overpriced if you look around on the market for comparable solar panels. So just keep that in mind. Got to make sure it's compatible, but that's standard for all electrical items. The one big takeaway from this though is it will take 1000 watts of input from solar. So conceivably you could charge this 2000 watt unit in two hours with a thousand watts of solar panels, which is, you know, you're not probably going to get a full 1000 watts out of your panels. There's always some loss, but that's still pretty amazing. When you compare that to say a Jackery, it's more like seven to nine. That's incredible. Like this thing charges fast. Now, if you're going to charge it just to AC power, one thing that I noticed right away is there's no power brick. The cord plugs directly from your outlet straight into the back of the unit and it starts charging. It's rated to take up to 1,440 watts of input from AC, which again would put charging a 2,048 watt hour unit at under two hours, which is amazing. So really like how fast it charges and I do not miss that power brick. Another thing worth mentioning though, you cannot plug in the solar and AC and use them both simultaneously. It only does the AC if the AC is plugged in, take that out, it'll do the solar, plug in both, it'll just use the AC. So some units will allow you to use both, this one does not. I don't know if that's a deal breaker for somebody if you're racing to charge it, but it's worth mentioning. Finally, you also have the car adapter. If you're gonna charge it off of your vehicle, very long charge rate on that. I think it's around 17 hours from zero to full. Personally, I don't use that feature, but if you do, keep that in mind, it's gonna charge a lot slower. So that's how you charge the unit. How does the unit charge other things? For the AC, it says it gives 2,400 watts of output and will overload at 3,600. I plugged in a refrigerator, toaster, hair dryer, had them all going. I was pulling around 2,600 watts out of this thing. Now, I don't know why you'd ever be making toast and drying your hair and running the refrigerator in a power outage, but if you had to, it'll do it. That does start producing enough heat that the fans that are variable speed will kick on to high mode. Then you can hear them quite easily. But I was pretty impressed at how much power this thing puts out. When I just had my refrigerator plugged into it, 
you know, it's going to vary depending on the size of your fridge, but for mine, and it's a pretty good size one, it was showing that it would keep that refrigerator running for about 1.6 days with around 60 to 70% charge remaining on the unit. Really nice. I have two refrigerators. I can use this thing to power those if I have a power outage, combine that with solar, and I could probably keep it running for quite a while. But even if you didn't have a way to recharge it, you could probably get a day or two of two refrigerators running off of this thing. So looking at the plugs themselves for the AC, it is 2400 watt pure sine wave converter. You have 420 amp outlets and then one 30 amp RV outlet. Moving on to DC, you have two 12 volt sockets and this output voltage is regulated. Finally, under the USB, you have three 100 watt USB C's and two USB A's. Personally, if I had a complaint, I wish there were a few more USB A's. The gear that I use, typically camera equipment, iPhone, that sort of thing that I need to charge when I'm out in the field, uh, it's almost all of it's USB A. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but I also have the bricks that I can put into the AC and charge multiple USB A's there as well. So there's a work around it. It just all depends on what you're looking for and what you wanna use it for. So for the different outlets, you have to push a button to turn them on, to energize them, separate one for the AC, and then another one for the DC and the USB. It does offer a power saving mode to where if you hit that button, because if you just turn these things on and then just leave it, it will draw power and eventually run it down to zero. But it has a power saving mode that you can enable that allows it to, when it gets no draw coming off of the outlet for a certain amount of time, it will shut that off. So really nice feature. I do a lot of charging right before I go to bed. So say I'm out camping, I'll plug a bunch of stuff in, go to bed halfway through the night, everything's charged. Instead of just sitting there and slowly draining the battery, if I put it in this power saving mode, it will turn those all off and save that juice. Really nice for multi-day trips. Another feature and a cool way you can use this is for a UPS system. That stands for uninterrupted power source. So what you do is you plug the unit into the wall, you plug whatever you don't want to ever lose power into the anchor, and it will feed the power through the anchor to whatever you're running off of it. See this a lot in like computer systems and stuff. They need to keep those running. If they lose power, then they lose all the data on there. So if you have something like that where you can't lose power, you can feed this through as a UPS and it will swap over in 20 milliseconds. I tried that with my computer and the screen didn't even flicker. So, so that's a pretty neat feature. So the last feature is the app. Really easy to download, really easy to set up and connect lets you control the basic functions of the unit, turn on and off the light, power outlets, adjust the display brightness, and then look for updates. It was able to update it, very quick, seamless process, the app itself. I'm not a big instruction kind of guy, so I just jumped into it, didn't really read that much about it, and it was very intuitive and easy to use. So another nice feature if you wanna control it remotely. So finally, we come to price. The regular price for this unit is $1,999, about a dollar a watt on the unit. It's another $1,000 if you want to get the expansion battery pack as well. Right now it's on sale and they also gave me a discount code that you can get $300 off if you purchase it before April 2nd. Which reminds me, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, I'm not sponsored by Anchor. I don't get any compensation for this video other than they gave me the unit to review. Any sales from it, no commissions on that. I always do that with my reviews. I'm like, send me the product, I'll review it, but I reserve the right to say exactly what I think. So that leads into my opinions. It's a really nice unit. I, I mean, the construction is great. The style of it is, it looks great but it's sturdy. Everything has that, you know, that quality feel when you can just touch something and you just know it's sturdy, it's well built. The charging super fast. The lack of fan noise is great. The output is pretty incredible. I love the portability of it with the wheels and the lighter weight that allows me to take it out on camping trips, but I love the capacity and 
you know, it's got the juice behind it that it can be used if I have a power outage and need to run my refrigerators or something off of it. So all around a great unit. I, I've watched a lot of other reviews. I've read a lot about this thing and Anchor is making a serious attempt to be right up there with the EcoFlows, the Jackeries, and this is a damn fine effort, quite frankly. My recommendation, you're looking for something this serious, do your homework. All of them have some pluses and minuses. See what really fits for you the best. For me, this one works great. It's just enough to take out for a multi-day family camping trip where Everybody can charge their phones, their speakers. I can do all my camera gear, drones, have all of that charged. And if I do happen to run out of charge, it charges super fast on solar. So for that kind of thing, it's great. Back up the house, awesome. Personally, highly recommend it. So that's it. I'm gonna see if I'm allowed back in the house now. And thanks for watching. All right, okay. Why is that not working? So why am I in the garage? This particular device, the 766, 767, 76, I was, Water heater is the bane of my existence. UPS, uninterrupted power system. It will switch over to the battery backup. I... So another feature. That thing's annoying.